Hi, this is John Reynolds with Solomon Kellers and Brickform. Today I'm going to talk to you about our acrylic sealers. The first set of acrylics that I'm going to go through are water-based sealer lines. So if you look at my board here, we've got our water-based products, we've got our Cure and Seal products, our Satin Cure uh, 1315 and our Satin Cure 309, and then under our sealer line, we've got our Satin Seal. So I'm going to go over these real quick and just talk to you real briefly about uh, the different uses and, and why we have the different designations. Uh, first, with the, with the curing seals, I've got the, uh, the Satin Cure 1315 and the Satin Cure 309. The differences between those sealers, the Satin Cure 1315, this references ASTM standards, okay? The 1315 complies with this. It is a 25% non-yellowing curing seal. Okay, these are the two very important parts of that uh, ASTM guideline. So the 1315, again, 25% solids, non-yellowing curing seal, designed to be placed on freshly poured concrete once the slab is hard enough to walk on without marring the surface. We have ones and fives in both. Um, uh, and the 309, if I move on into the 309 here, the 309 is, uh, complies again, this, this 309 references an ASTM standard, okay? It's an 18% solid sealer, okay? And it also does not have to be non-yellowing. According to the ASTM standard 309, having uh, a yellowing type of acrylic in a 309 uh, sealer is acceptable. However, with ours, we have a non-yellowing acrylic in that product. So either one of these is going to comply with the non-yellowing, but the 309 is going to have a lower solids count. It's going to be a little less, a uh, um, little less of a build on the surface once you're done uh, applying the product. So again, the 1315 and the 309 are curing seals that are designed to be placed on freshly placed concrete once you get on the once you can get on the surface without marring it. Best application procedure is by a sprayer. So we want to spray this down in two to three light coats, applying the product at a coverage rate of about 300 square feet per gallon. So that's our curing seal, satin curing seal. If I move over here and uh, talk to you about the satin seal. The satin seal, this is a, a sealer that's designed to be applied to fully cured concrete. It's a 26% solid sealer, and as its name of, in, implies, it's designed to uh, dry out and cure to a satin finish. So these products, the, the sealer products, uh, are designed to be placed over fully cured concrete. All right, so that's why we've got that designation there. Curing seal is designed to be placed on freshly placed concrete. The satin seal designed to be placed on fully cured concrete. Uh, this can be rolled or sprayed. Um, my preference is to spray and then follow with a uh, microfiber, microfiber uh, window washing mitt type product so that it lays it down real nice and smooth. That's the way I've had the best success with it, okay? I've got some other products down here. Uh, Matte Magic, this is a product that you do not want to use with any of our water-based products. Matte Magic is designed to go into our solvent-based product, products, which I'll talk to you about in a little bit. The traction grip can be added to any of these products. You do have to mix it up, uh, fairly uh, agitate it fairly well to get it to dissipate in the product. The Tinta Seal is another product that you do not want to use with any of our water-based products. The Tinta Seal is designed, again, for our solvent-based products. So, with either of these, no Tinta Seal and no Matte, uh, yeah, Matte Magic. Okay? So, with that, we've got our Compatibility-wise, the satin seal can be applied over the top of the gem curing seal. So in other words, if you go in and you pour a slab of concrete 
and you cure it with one of these two products, you can come back and seal it with the satin seal 30, 60, 90, or a year down the road, no problem. One final note about these products, you can see in the, well you probably can't, well yeah, you can kind of see in the jugs. In the jugs, these products are white, and uh, they will go on the slab in a cloudy, uh, bluish, uh, white haze, uh, yet once they dry and cure, they'll be fully, uh, fully cleared out, and uh, that's normal for water-based products. Hi, this is John Reynolds with Solomon Colors and Brick Foreman. Today I'm going to talk to you about our sealers and our curing seals that are solvent-based. And we've got a bunch of them to talk to you about today. We're going to start out with our gem curing seals. These are products designed to be placed over freshly placed concrete. So when we start talking about curing seals, we always want to remember they're designed for the first day of application. So in other words, when I get my concrete done, and it's hard enough to walk on without marring, I can spray on these gem cure and seal products and I've got added protection both from a curing standpoint as well as topical stain intrusion uh, on the day that I pour. So when we're looking at our gem cure and seals, you're going to see a number like 1315-350. So if you see on this can, we have the gem cure and seal 1315 and in this situation it's 650 BOC. So the designation 1315 is going to relate to an ASTM standard. Okay? ASTM. So that is a standard that requires a 25% solid sealer and a non-yellowing product. So in the situation here, I've got Gem Cure and Seal 1315-650. So that means it's a 1315, 25% solids, non-yellowing, 650 gram VOC compliant seal. Again, Curin Seal is designed to be placed on the concrete the day of placement, once the concrete is hard enough to get on there without marring. We have the 309, this is going to refer to an 18% solid sealer. So a little lower on the solids, a little less film build, a little less protection, from a stain perspective, but we're going to have the same designation, 309-350. So then we know we've got a, a, a sealer that's compliant with ASDM uh, 309, 18% solid sealer. Now the 309 technically says that you, you don't have to worry about it being yellowing or non-yellowing, but I can tell you that the acrylics that we use in this product are non-yellowing. So it's actually a little better than most of your 309s that are out there on the market. Again, we're going to dash 100, dash 350, or dash 650, depending on what the BOC content is for your particular area. So, that's the Cure and Seal products. Again, freshly placed concrete. Spray those on at a coverage rate of about 350 square feet per gallon, 300, 350 square feet per gallon. Spray them on two to three light coats just to get a nice even film over the slab. Again, it helps slow the hydration process down so you end up with stronger concrete. Works really well uh, to help protect the top as well. So moving on to the, uh, the solid-based acrylic sealers that we have that are designed for uh, cured concrete. We have our gem seal and our poly seal. Okay? These are sealers that have acrylics in them that are designed to perform better over fully cured concrete. So fully cured depends on your weather and temperature and conditions of placement, how thick your slab is, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's something that you've got to determine out in the field. But with the Gem Seal, we have our Gem Seal 100, our Gem Seal 400, and our Gem Seal 700. These again are related to the VOC content of the sealer, which is very much dependent upon where you live in this country and where you're applying the product. Our 100 and 400 are 19% solids. Okay. Our 700 is a 27% solid sealer. These gem, the gem seal is made with our best acrylics. So these sealers are designed to really perform in uh, moderate traffic, you know, residential driveways, patios, pool decks, et cetera, et cetera. Um, they're not the best for in high traffic interior applications where, you know, odor is a concern or you've got a ton of traffic or you've got a food service preparation area. These are not uh, 
designed for that, but much more for a modest traffic uh, application area. Our poly seal is, our, is a little bit of an economy line sealer, still uses very good acrylics, um, kind of follows the same scenario up here. Our 100 is a 19% solid sealer, our poly seal 400, again a 19% solid sealer, and then our poly seal 650 is also a 19% solid sealer. These are going to have a modest sheen, it's not going to be a super high gloss, not going to be a dull finish, it's going to be a moderate sheen. Uh, same way with the 100 and the 400 with the gem seal, you're going to have a modest sheen with that, where your 700 is going to be a high gloss seal. Okay, so the 700 is going to be the highest gloss. The rest are going to be modest. So application, 100 and 400 and 100, 400 and 650 poly seal, best application method is by a sprayer. Again, spraying on light, thin coats at a rate of about 300 square feet per gallon uh, will give you the best coverage uh, for any of those sealers. Your, your Gem Seal 700 is more of a roll-on sealer. It's a little thicker in nature, and it's best to roll that product on. Now, if you have a situation where you need some added traction, we also have um, our, uh, our safety seal. This is a product that comes pre-mixed with a traction grip material, so you can get that in our 100 and our 400. Uh, if you need traction grip in a product like our Gem Seal 700, that's what we've got this product for. This gets added right to the, the can of sealer and mixed up, and uh, will dissipate and give you a nice, about 100 grit sandpaper feel uh, for that uh, product. If you want a dull finish, um, sort of a satin or, uh, or even closer to flat, the uh, Matte Magic is what we use for that. The Matte Magic gets mixed in with the solvent-based sealer. It gets uh, mixed up with a Jiffy Mixer and uh, can create a nice satin finish with your uh, solvent-based sealer. The other product that we have that gets mixed in with these products, this is our Tinta Seal. Tinta Seal is designed to color a five gallon bucket of our solvent-based sealers to create a colored sealer or a tinted sealer. These, uh, these products work extremely well, all in conjunction with our solvent-based sealers. All uh, are very good app, uh, products to apply uh, in, in just about any decorative concrete application, overlay application. Uh, with the odor, they tend not to be used as much inside, uh, but if you've got a situation where, where you can air out the house or, or the business uh, and it's not going to affect anybody, then using solvent-based sealers inside is okay. Uh, but again, you got to be cognizant of the odors. Um, as far as compatibility, pretty much uh, anything goes here. We can, we can put our, our Gem Seal 100 and our Gem Seal 400 over our Curing Seal uh, 100 and 350. Uh, if we have our, uh, our Gem Seal, uh, Gem Curing Seal 650, we can seal that with our Gem Seal 700 or our Poly Seal 650. So, in other words, we just want to keep with the same VOC class. If I'm putting down a 1315-350, I want to cure and, seal, or, and then come back a month or two later and seal it with our Gem Seal 400 or our Poly Seal 400. Same way with our, with our say, our 309-100, we want to come back and seal it with a Poly Seal 100 or a Gem Seal 100. Keep, keep in the same family for, for that type of reseal uh, of these products. Other than that, Pretty straightforward. They are solvents. Use proper personal protective equipment when you're when you're applying these products, and apply them thin to wind.